Welcome to the Bex Artist Spotlight. Exclusive to Vibes.Live. Trans Vibes with Vibes.Live coming to you live from our studios in Johannesburg, South Africa. Now, over the last couple of months, we've been talking about having this incredible vocalist and who's now joined our Viberian community as a member of the Vibets. And we've been talking about having her on the show, and I'm so excited to welcome to Trans Vibes on a Saturday night, Zara Taylor. Good evening, Zara. Welcome to Trans Vibes. How are you doing this evening? Hello, John. Hello, Vibarians. Thank you so much for having me. I'm doing wonderful. How are you? Well, it's a Saturday night. It's uh, trance. It's uh, music. It's uh, getting the community together. And we've been talking, as uh, I mentioned, about having you on the show for quite some time now. And I firstly just want to thank you for making the time to chat to us right here on Trans Vibes. Uh, I know you've got a very, very busy schedule, but you've also been very, very busy in terms of the music. So thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you so much for having me. It is an honor, truly. Now, Zara, let's get into it. What were your musical influences? Because, I mean, you are literally celebrating being in the EDM dance, uh, progressive house, house industry, and so on. You've been a part of this industry for 20 years, two decades. I mean, there's a lot of people that are listening to your music nowadays that are not even two decades old. What got you into the music side of things? Oh, there's so many wonderful musicians that have inspired me over the years. Of course, being born in the 80s, I grew up with some of the big voices like Whitney Houston and Celine Dion. Um, but I actually, you know, found myself listening to a lot of singer songwriters growing up. My mother was always playing Bob Marley, <laughs> which is still my heart to this day. Um, and still on the record player almost daily in my house. Mm. Um, and I'm sure my kids really love that because they're getting, you know, some of the classics uh, in their upbringing. Um, but yeah, uh, Sarah McLaughlin was a big one for me. Of course, Madonna. And I think you could probably hear a little bit of the vocals uh, that they bring in maybe some of my singing or my style of singing. But mm -hmm. um, I was really mostly just listening to singer songwriters and more acoustic stuff growing up. And then you got into EDM. How did that happen? Tell me a little bit more about that journey. Yeah, what a beautiful journey. Um, I give a lot of credit to DJ Sultan of Sultan and Shepherd. Uh, they're doing some amazing stuff still to this day. Holy moly. Have you seen their live shows? So mm -hmm. cool. Um, I actually ended up moving to Montreal from Victoria, BC when I graduated from Performing Arts College. My best friend and I, we went out to Montreal and it was in Montreal that I met DJ Sultan and we ended up uh, getting into a relationship actually for almost four years and at the beginning of that relationship he said, hey Zara, why don't you sing on one of these songs with me? And the rest is kind of history. So the first song we did was No Why, signed to uh, Deep Dishes label. Wow. Yeah, Yoshi Toshi. <laughs> wow, what a journey. And that started everything. And then we have to talk about Lost. I mean, Lost is one of the few trance tracks that is out there, still one of my favorites, that has been number one on charts in three different years. The journey to get to actually do something with Roger Shaw, uh, a.k.a. Sun Lounger. That must have been an incredible experience for you as well. Absolutely. Roger ended up uh, discovering my songs with Sultan and asked me if I would like to collaborate on a trance song with him. And of course, I said, yes, of course, I would love to. And um, we wrote a couple songs together and uh, Lost was one of them, one of the first tracks we wrote together. And... Um, I can't believe the impact that it's had on the world to this day. It is um, very, very meaningful for me that this song written in, you know, from a very sad place for me and it would end up becoming such a, a part of a global healing for so many. So this journey has been really, really amazing for you. So many Spotify streams, so many producers working on, you know, the vocal sample packs that you've put out there. It must be a really, really amazing experience for you to know that Zara Taylor from The Humble Journey and Fake It Till You Make It has actually become a brand, an international brand. 
Yeah, I'm pinching myself every day that I've managed to <laughs> stay relevant for 20 years in this um, very competitive uh, scene that is EDM. Um, I think that uh, writing always from my heart and from a very honest place about my own human experience has uh, been very uh, relative to many people. Uh, a lot of people can really relate to the struggles that it is to be human and to, you know, be on this journey, learning how to love and be loved and all the things that I end up writing about, which is usually love. <laughs> so I, I am actually just blown away that the music is, is still going strong. And the vocal packs have been a huge, a huge reason for that because I stopped making so much music when I settled down to have a family and have children. I stopped touring and I was only putting out maybe about a one single per year. And then once I released the vocal packs, it really allowed for my music to just spread around the world and continue to be remixed on a daily basis and uh, new remixes coming out almost every day and, and just, just keeping my name kind of out there and, um, and keeping the music new and fresh, you know, like vocals that I had maybe written 20 years ago are being remixed today and coming out as new songs and charting and signing to major labels. So it's it's quite a cool thing, these vocal packs. They've really allowed for my career to stay, uh, like I said, relevant mm, even mm. during my, my down times and even though I'm not touring. So I think that that is a huge reason for it. Like I said, I'm getting... I'm getting new remixes in my inbox almost every day. And when I went to calculate on YouTube, you know, how many of these songs and, and views are out there, there's over 150 million streams on wow. my name, you know, on my songs <laughs> just on YouTube. So that's that was a pretty big number to digest. It's hard to kind of fathom <laughs> that kind of, you know, reach. <laughs> uh, I, I, Especially, I, yeah, when I just got into it as a little little hobby. <laughs> a long I, time ago. I can imagine what it must be like for you to have a look at those kind of figures. But when I spoke to you earlier on and we, we had a chat about doing the interview uh, for this evening's show, um, I asked you a question, which I ask a lot of our interviewees. What was that wow moment for you? And you mentioned you could have said that it was standing on stage in front of 60,000 people, New Year's Eve, performing with Armin van Buren. But you gave me a different answer, and that really just warmed my heart. What has been your wow moment in your journey in music? Yeah, um, that that was a blackout moment <laughs> <laughs> that I barely remember um, that New Year's Eve night. But no, the the big takeaway for me that keeps me, you know, motivated to continue to make music, no matter you know how tired I am or how hard life gets is the impact that the music has on the fans. And when I hear those stories and get those emails from people telling me how, you know, my song was part of their healing process for them to, you know, get through a really hard time or to get over the loss of a loved one, whatever, their grief, their, 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 their hardship, um, their sadness, that to me is the legacy um, moment for me, right? That's that's what I want to make music for and to be remembered for is the contribution, you know, that my songs have had on the people and on their healing and hopefully on a global scale, you know, even if mm -hmm. it's just one person at a time or if it's millions, I just want to help make this world a better place with my songs. So now speaking yeah. of making the world <laughs> a better place with your songs, your album came out uh, a couple of weeks ago. Tell us a little bit about the album, because the album doesn't just feature some of your up-tempo, well-known tracks. You've also gone and paid homage and literally paid it forward as well. Tell us a little bit more about the album. Thank you. So the album, I wanted to sort of honor the journey of my career and uh, my stories um, but I also really wanted to honor the different incredible producers that I've worked with. And I mentioned in a conversation we had earlier about how I probably should have made like a whole volume, like a whole series of albums, because there's so <laughs> many incredible producers that have 
have worked with my vocals, you know, through the packs, the vocal packs that I release and um, also original collaborations. But yeah, I really, I really picked some of my, my favorite songs that I've written and some of the favorite mixes. Like I said, they're not all on there. I wish I could have, you know, made a, I could have made a, a 50 track list, but that would have <laughs> been a, a lot. But, um, but yeah, these, uh, these, these incredible producers, uh, that have worked with my vocals, with my packs. I wanted to also highlight their talents, and uh, as some of these songs maybe aren't as uh, well known uh, in the trance world, you know, with my trance fans, um, th- they didn't necessarily get as much attention, or maybe they're in a different genre. So some of my trance fans didn't didn't even know that these incredible producers existed making down tempo house. But I did feel that they would you know my Balearic sort of chill out the sun lounger Balearic fans would also really love that Middle Eastern vibe that is coming from Batu Anat and Jay Aliyev you know these incredible Turkish producers that I fell in love with when I found their mixes uh, from my vocal packs so I wanted to yeah bring attention to some of these maybe less known producers in the trance genre you know I absolutely I love the way <laughs> you are paying it forward by thanking them. Now, of course, we are going to be playing some of the tracks from the album. What has Zara Taylor got coming up in the near future that we can look out for? Oh, I'm really excited to um, share with the world a new collaboration with Kieran McCulley, who I think is just brilliant, and I'm loving everything he's doing these days. So we've got a really catchy new song that's going to come out uh, on his upcoming album. Yeah, hopefully another song with Roger in the near future. And of course, a third vocal pack is going to be also on the horizon. So very excited to create more vocals that uh, can be played with and created uh, by all these new producers, up and coming producers all over the world. That's really exciting for me. Zara, I have a question for you because when we set up the interview, um, I realized that you actually are very deeply spiritual person. You're a person that thinks very deeply about things. You care so much about the humans, about the human race, about keeping music alive and having so much passion about the genre and the scene. And this question, I think, is very pertinent for our viewers and for our listeners around the world. What advice would you give to somebody that looks at Zara Taylor and goes, wow, I want to do what she does. I want to follow in her footsteps. What advice would you give to that person listening right now? Well, absolutely follow your heart and don't give up. Um, You know, even if you have self-doubt, I would recommend to just lean into that fear and, you know, just continue upon your journey with the passion that inspired you in the first place to continue to move towards that joy. If it brings you joy, keep doing it even if it's hard Um, because I feel that it's only in the doing of the hard things (laughs) that we get to the other side and we get to reap the rewards right Um, Mm -hmm. so believe in yourself and um, and don't give up and look for your peers and your community of supporters that lift you up that you know that believe in you that tell you you can Surround yourself with those people, with the high vibrational people that are doing also inspiring things and that are that tell you you can. Right. Um, Try and quiet the noise. You know, the people who who are like, oh, dream smaller. Yeah. Don't spend your time on those people. Spend your time on the big, you know, surrounding yourself with people who dream big and keep moving towards that. Even 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 if it's one step at a time, you know, keep moving towards the dream. And um, and be patient with yourself. That's a journey, a lifetime journey, right? That we yep. that we keep aiming for. Live a, it, with passion, right? To live to and move towards joy and passion, I think, would be my biggest advice for anybody. And I love the way that you said earlier on when we were setting up the interview that the one thing that a lot of people make the mistake on is by comparing themselves to others 
and you found your breakthrough by not comparing yourself to others. Yeah, I think it's easy as artists to compare ourselves to others. It can it can just it absolutely kills the creativity. I think we have to believe in our own voice and take the time to get to know what that is and to get to know ourselves and to just to know that we each individually have our own gift uh, for this planet and whether that's in, you know, music or visual arts or, you know, maybe that's working as, as a nurse at the hospital. I mean, it, whatever it is that you're doing, I say, you know, don't compare, do it with your whole heart, do it honestly, just try to live the most authentic life because I, I really believe that when we live in authenticity with who you know who we are that our gift that we were are born with for this world can truly shine so to try and you know come back to the most authentic version of yourself and i think what that means is letting go of the comparison right to stop trying to don't don't try to be something else or someone else or sound like someone else just get really in touch and in tune with your own voice you know whatever that is Love it. Absolutely love it. Zara, thank you so much for joining us on Trans Vibes and for becoming an instrumental member of the Viberian team. Uh, we thank you for your time once again. We look forward to the new tracks coming out. And of course, I'm going to be pestering you in the months to come. Uh, um, is it there yet? Is it there yet? Has the track been released yet? Is there a date for the release yet? I'm going to be bugging you about that. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to play some of your tunes right here on Trans Vibes. And again, thank you so much for joining us right here on Trans Vibes on Vibes.live. Thank you so much, John. It's such a pleasure to be on Trans Vibes tonight. And... Uh, thank you to all my fans for listening and for your continued support. It means the world to me. Don't hesitate to reach out on social media. Shoot me a message. Let me know how you connect to the music. I love hearing it. Thank you so much.